Tottenham versus traveling up to play Manchester City. Reese, how are you feeling about this game? Because yeah, so there's no words. Yeah, how? <laughs> to be fair, it's it's going to be a tough month for Spurs. I mean, going. Everyone says that Man City are a bit of a boat, like we're a bogey team for them. But at the he had it's different. Like it, it just is different. I don't know why. I think a White Hart Lane they're not as good. But for me, for the game. If we can somehow get a draw, that would be great. But I'm worried. Like, you know, we play these inverted fullbacks. Um, and then on their side, they're going to have Foden. And if they play Doku as well, he's going to have a field day against Pedro Porro. Like, we're, that's what I'm really worried about. And and in midfield, they've got all their best players back now, other than De Bruyne. So, yeah, like, I'm, I'm worried. I, I get you're worried. Patrick, how about yourself? Because you know they're going to open up against you. I mean, Ange himself a few weeks ago or last week said he hears managers moaning about not having the players to say their style of football. I say, just do it, mate. So he, you know he's coming out of attack. You know he's going to open up. Are you licking your lips at I, the prospect of frying these chickens? You know what? <laughs> I, I, For the first time ever, I am excited that Spurs, first of all, respect your manager. I like him, even though after Chelsea, you're down to nine men. The man stuck to his principles. Big up to him with the high line. Um, I, I, I am happy, Terry, because all the time Spurs had these managers who loved fucking the bus. And guess what? If you pack the bus against Man City, you've got Harry Kane dropping in and Son, who's fast, and the other guy who I keep butchering his name. Uh, the one who Kuzevsky. Yeah, him. Them two, with, with Harry Kane dropping back and giving them balls, that was just the formula to beat City. Uh, and that's the formula that you guys smacked us many times and you hurt us. You hurt our feelings a lot, to be honest. Let's not forget <laughs> Champions League, what you did to us. But yeah. for, the first time, for the first time ever, we've got Dr. Angie, who says he's going to stick to his guns with the high line, pressing. And I really want to see that, please. And if he does that at the Etihad, I swear, even though if we can end up beating you with a big margin, I will, I will send him a video saying, thank you very much, Angie, because I haven't seen you guys go toe-to-toe -to -toe with City. You usually just pack the bus, hit us on the counter. But just a question for you as a, as a Spurs fan, because we are all laughing from outside because he mm -hmm. was the manager of the month three times. Are you are you behind this manager that even regardless he goes down to 10 men, he has a high line as of high as somebody's... Of course I, I am. Mean, yeah, of course I am. Like Even in that Chelsea game when we went down, we were down to nine men and we nearly nicked a draw at the end. Like We could have easily nicked it just by playing that way. So for me, so, so you were happy with that line all the way inside Chelsea's house. Look, it doesn't matter. It nearly worked, so, and it to me it's better than parking the bus. I want to see our team go and like we we've been calling for an attackive manager for three or four years now. Yeah, Look, he's here. he's here just because he doesn't want to park the bus. That, that doesn't matter. We've we've wanted attacking football for so long. No, no matter what way he does it, like I'm all behind it. Look, for me, obviously, the only thing, Terry, is uh, I really wanted to play Spurs at their strength. Like Madison, I rate him highly now. I used to think Madison was just English hype. That's what I used to say. But after what I've seen he does with the ball and what he was doing at Leicester, now I understand why some people wanted him, including Man City. But I know you've got a lot of injuries. Are you worried about that? Especially, is it nine? I saw the on the uh, on the on sky about nine. Yeah, we have we have a silly. I think we must have the worst injury list in the Prem right now. Other than, like maybe us in Newcastle, but Man United. Yeah, as well. course, yeah United. That's sorry, yeah, United as well. Yeah, yeah. But look, of course, I'm worried about our injuries. But like I said, it's going to be a tough month. Like even if we can just pick up a couple of points, I'm not worried about winning games. If we go out and and still play the way that we want to, um, and then by January we'll have all our players back. So, and then we go again. If we don't slip too far down the table, you know, we, we're still in a good position. I, I understand that, Reese, and I want to get everyone's opinions on this in a minute. But I know you, you back the manager to play style. Yeah. But losing four on the bounce is what's potentially going to happen. Surely there isn't a circumstance when any member of the top six clubs, the traditional top six clubs and the big six clubs with the money we all spend, surely losing four on the bounce, irrespective of injuries, could be looked at and criticised because everybody else gets criticised for it. Do you think the Spurs should be dragged over the coals if they lose four on the bounce? I think it'd be I think it'd be different if you know Ange had been in two 
two to three years, but he's not. He's only been in three months. So we're it's so, such a fresh idea that we're seeing. Like we're still too behind it to even worry about how Ange is going to play for these games. You know what I'm saying? No. I get that. Go on. No, like well, well, basically what, what I'm saying is because we're so, we've been wanting attacking football for what three four years now. Like I said, now that it's in, it's so fresh in our mind that we are so in love with it. Like I don't want him to change. Like. It's not naive, it's not naive though, because no, no, I'm not being funny. Our, our, our injury list, yeah. What we're gonna we're gonna play a low block, right, against Man City, Chelsea, whoever, and we're gonna start Eric Dyer and Ben Davis. Now, if you're a Tottenham fan, trust me, you don't want that. It's gonna end up the same score regardless if you start. That's true. There's a but there's a difference. It is true. It is true. I promise but you. It's true. Not, I, go ahead, Jess. Sorry, I was just gonna say there's a dip like it, it's not that binary, it's not play free flowing, like you know, attacking football or a low block. Like that's that's not what we're talking about here. Like you can modify your tactics just a little bit. Like Ange is like, I'm going full throttle no matter what. We yeah. know that there's variations between there, and he doesn't seem to have like any he doesn't want to do any of that. And I get that you guys have always wanted like an attacking manager after having mm -hmm. Conte and Jose. I get that, you know. But I feel like it's all results based. You know, it's cool to play your way when you're winning, but it's going to get old fast. You know, I guarantee after, you know, if you lose four games in a row and then you keep going like this, despite your injuries, there will be some people saying, well, could we not modify it? Because every single manager has variations to their tactics. So it's not just about low blocking it. I agree. No, I agree. That's literally like, to be honest, that's literally what I just said. Like I said. It's such a threat in our minds that at the moment it's not worrying us. But like you said, the more it builds up, yeah, it probably will do. But at the moment, I'm not too fussed. Maybe it is a little bit being naive, but like so, so then he needs to nip it in the bud because whilst that whilst I agree with the sentiments of Eric Dyer and Ben Davies at the back isn't gonna yeah. work in a low block. Eric Dyer and Ben Davies doesn't work at the back in any situation. They're both exactly awesome. but it's not like Van der I know Romero's suspended, so we'll be coming back. Yeah. But he's not good enough to lead a, a defence anyway. Yeah. Van der Veren and Madison are out till the new year. You've got a fair few games in that time. Yeah. You can't just keep playing this style of football. It invites that much pressure because, like you said, Absolutely. if you win, you're still in that conversation. But if this run of form continues and if these problems still occur, where teams are just so easy to break you down, then you could be completely out of it by the start of January when the players come back. And it's a massive mountain to climb then. Out of what? Out of what? Improve and everything. Out of what though? Because we we was not expecting well, anything. From it, it, if if Tottenham, if Tottenham don't get top four at this point, I think that's going to be a disappointment. I don't think the leagues. I I think Tottenham should be okay. expecting to get top four at this point. No, Europe. I, I, I would. I wouldn't be dis. Yeah, Europe. I wouldn't be disappointed if we didn't get Champions League though. Wait, right, you, you don't. Ex well, who, but you say you don't expect anything at all. At all, nothing. No, no. At the start of the season, we wasn't. Everybody ripped us off. Even the Spurs fans. Yeah, but like, expectations right change as the season goes. You didn't exactly. expect to start the way you did. So and based expectations on that, your change, expectations... and then all these injuries come, and it drops right back down. Like it levels itself out. Do you well, know well, what I'm huh? saying? If we had uh, a top four, if we who's going to jump you to top four? So, so if, if you don't get top four, you won't, you won't be bothered. But who who would be the team that jumps yet? Realistically, I'm not saying I wouldn't be bothered. Like I would be bothered, but I wouldn't say it's a disappointment. Like at the start of the season, I, I, Europe I think was it's got to be because the, the only competitive team is Newcastle. But Newcastle in the exact Aston same Villa. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, if Tottenham Hotspur get beaten to top four by Aston Villa, that should be a disappointment anyway. Yeah. First, yeah, first, but first. but also like I do think that there's this like anytime you change a manager, like you're in this long term project. You're not like. You guys had a team that was set up for attacking football, which is exactly why when you got an attacking manager, it clicked right away. You're not in a long term project. You changed your manager. So it's not I feel like because Arsenal went through a longer one and Manchester United are still trying to get it right. Everybody that changes their manager thinks that they need two or three or four years to start having some sort of expectations. 100%. You guys have no Europe. You're an excellent side. You're dealing with some injuries like you should at least like. Not getting top four for Spurs, from what I've seen as an Arsenal fan, I think that would be shocking considering, you know, you're that good. Like, as much yeah, as I it think, pains I, me I, to I, say. I think that the balance has got to be there, hasn't it? Because I, I feel that I understand the manager's new and you're going to have some peaks and troughs. But losing four on the bounce, that's something that the 
tiny clubs do. Man United have been horrendous this season. We ain't lost four on the bounce. I don't think that should ever be acceptable by any fan base. And I don't actually think the style of play is Big Ange's issue. I think it's game management. And this is where I think when it comes to tomorrow, City are going to do some damage in the sense of if he had, I saw this against Villa. I know you could have finished your chances, but you didn't. But the amount of energy that was used in the opening 50, 60 minutes, and then you just died. You couldn't get back Mm. into shape. You do that against Man City and suddenly you can't run anymore. You suddenly can't get back into shape. That is a team that will put five, six, seven goals past you. And then you start getting into that realms of doubt creeping into players' minds. So I know he wants to play style. But I think he's got to come away. Even if he loses, he's got to come away from this not beaten. Because you can lose and not be beaten, if that makes sense. G, how do you see this game going? Can you see a shock? I mean, some people, Hussam on the channel earlier, is predicting Spurs getting a draw up there. Uh, how do you see the game going yourself, mate? Yeah, no, I think City will... You're talking about the, the best team in Europe, you know what I mean? So if Liverpool are going to struggle, I feel like Spurs would struggle as well and even when Arsenal played them that was a good game by Arsenal in terms of obviously getting the victory and stuff like that but still a struggle that wasn't easy you know what I mean and I think obviously Arsenal are better than Spurs you know at this current moment in time and I think with the way that you play that's why it's just it's not even that you're you're rubbish or you've got poor players like it's not going to be because of the quality of your team it's just because of the style of play that's the only reason why and playing against a team like City who've got you know players like Haaland, Doku you know who want to run you know who can run the channels and stuff like that the movement I just think it's going to be a long day you know for you guys but I do think you guys will get some goals though I don't think it's going to I don't think they're going to be like 5-0 I think you will score in the game because of the way that you do play and City will probably get a little bit overexcited, so to speak, in terms of opening you up and, you know, getting in and stuff like that. But then you'll be able to open them up because City are uh, just like everybody else. You know, they can be they can be got at. We saw that with Wolves. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those kind of things. But Terry said it, man, your in-game management is a bit of a killer. Like you can keep, I know you're saying, I know what you're saying because you're kind of going down that, in my opinion, anyway, the route of, which I think everyone's doing. It just seems like everybody hopes that they get this club-like manager who comes into a team, changes the way that we play, takes three years, gets the team to challenge. Then once they challenge, they reach this pinnacle and then they can go on and do all of these amazing things. But I'm like, as Jess said, it will get old fast, like real, real fast. You know, you can't keep just losing, losing, losing. Once you get to game five, six and you're not winning, See all of that high line and attacking football? Yeah, you're going to want that to be not replaced, but you're definitely going to want it to be modified. You're not going to be so... You're, you, you're, you're not naive. You, do you know what I mean? And Tottenham and fans are not naive. You're not going to just keep saying, yeah, yeah, this is fine. You know, let's keep going with this. And, you know, this, this is OK because it's different than what we have with Conte and Mourinho and stuff like that. They're not... They weren't losing four or five games on the bounce. No way. Why? Because yeah. they understood what they needed to kind of do. Obviously, you just didn't agree with it, which is fine. But they understood that, you know, you can't lose four, five, six, whatever games, you know, in, in a row. And I think Ange is at the moment, everything's nice. It's the honeymoon period. It's all good. Lose again and again. I promise you, he's going to have to be thinking, might need to just, just modify it a little bit. Doesn't have to yeah. be crazy, just enough. Just enough. I agree. I agree. But... You, you... One second, you, you you make a very good point, and this is why I was saying earlier it's a bit naive. The thing is, Spurs fans for the last four or five seasons they've had consistent performances, but it was defensive football. When they won games playing defensive football, and they did go on runs with Conte and 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 uh, Jose Mourinho, the minute they start going against lower block teams and they still approach the, the game the same way which is defensively five in the back and all that they used to get frustrated they're like why are you not modifying it according to the lower opposition we need to be a little bit more attacking take out a center back and add a midfielder i think it's very hypocritical not to do it the other way around just because attacking football is easy on the eye and you enjoy watching attacking football and, and it produces goals you need to criticize the manager for the same thing because if you were criticizing it when it was defensive football why not criticizing it now? You're going against the bigger teams now and you're not modifying it. And what makes it worse is that you actually have injuries. When you have injuries, you know you're, the manager is much more aware of his players than us. He knows the capability of his defenders 
versus Romero and Van de Ven as, as an example, or whoever he plays Lo Celso instead of Madison because of Mendes, Madison's injury, or even when Bisuma was out, when Bisuma's out with suspension, who comes in and doesn't play the same way as him. You need to modify it according to what you have. Now, I respect Ange for persisting with his philosophy, but I have to stay consistent here, be honest to what I said. I said, I'm going to judge Ange based on uh, when his honeymoon period is done. Because it's all fun and, and, and games when you're winning. But the minute you start losing, how do you respond? I said, when he gets his first loss, is he going to bounce back? What is he going to do? He lost one. He lost two. He lost three. And now, potentially, he's going to lose four. In no world is this acceptable. All of us here, if our managers lost four games in a row, regardless of the context, we would say it's not good enough. I, You need to sit here. If you lose four in a row, and you're going to be like, okay, fuck it, it's City. It's okay. Everyone loses to City. But what happens if you lose one more after it? Is that what you need? Do you need to lose a fifth game after City to say, okay, something is broken, something is wrong? Why is the manager not adapting to his capabilities right now? I think it's very naive for Spurs fans just to use the excuse that now he has a philosophy and he respects it and he doesn't want to change it to approach every game as if it, as if it is the same. Because at the end of the day, the results are are what's more important. And as Terry said, it United are so bad this year, and we haven't lost four in a row. Like if that just deep that if you told me who's the bet has had the better season, Andrew or, or Ten Hag, you're gonna say Ange. But he lost four in a row. Ten Hag hasn't lost four in a row. Ten Hag has actually gotten results and we still criticize them, which is why I'm saying I'm saying this is very hypocritical. We would rather sit here, lose four in a row, but applaud the fact that we played offensive football instead of saying, Hey, today I don't have the best team, today I don't have the best defenders, today I don't have the best, best midfielders. Let me just adapt to today's game, get a result, get a point, get three points or get a point, whatever it is. And then once I get my players back, I'll go back to my philosophy and what I know. He is showing right now, if this continues, that he has zero adaptability. And that's one of the worst things of being a Premier League manager. If you're a Premier League manager that doesn't know how to uh, uh, adapt to opponents and to the current squad that you have, then that to me, that's probably one of the worst flaws that you can have as a Premier League manager. Yeah, no, to be fair. I do agree with what you're saying. I'm not stupid. Like, if I was the manager, I'll be playing as deep as possible against Man City. And it's the same thing when 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 we go down to nine against Chelsea. Like, time will tell with these things. And am I still going to get behind my managers just because he like the way he wants to play? I'm going to get behind him. So, yes, I could. It, like, we could do with it being changed. But at the moment, like with how many injuries, they have, everyone has injuries there, like whatever. But I don't think missing your two centre backs, your star player Madison, Basuma was on um, suspended. You know we've got so many wingers. Our bench is just filled with academy pro like academy products. So, like. I think you have to take it in. Like it's just no, naivety just to not are, take it in for me. You are, you, you are, you are right. Look, and I understand that you, you've got a lot of issues. And I think this is actually a learning curve for Big Ange. I think he, when Jurgen Klopp first came to the Prem, the same gaslighting was done of Liverpool fans. No, this is just how he plays heavy metal football. Heavy metal football. Klopp adapted. Klopp adapted and started to manage games better. He didn't go all out attack as much. He created a, a more solid defensive structure. He adapted to winning the Premier League. And I think that's what Big Ange is going to have to learn to do is that it, this, this isn't Scotland or Australia. It's a very hard league. And I think he saw that against Wolves. where Damn, one of the teams that's not considered good beat us. And look, it's going to be an interesting game.